may be hard for you to believe, but sometimes rabbis get writer's block. Meaning we stare at a screen and nothing comes out of our minds onto the keyboard. And you think to yourself, what are you going to say? It happens after the holidays. But Parshat Breshit, it's the beginning. There has to be something to say. And when I was thinking about what there was to say, I went back to God's first words when God created the world. And in Pirkei Avot, in the Mishnah, it tells us that they were Eser Ma'amarot, that God created the heavens and the earth with ten utterances the world came into being. Ten sayings. The rabbis think, why did it have to take God ten sayings to create the world? Sort of like name that tune. God could probably have done it in one. But the rabbis answer that God chose ten utterances in order to punish the wicked because we are told that the wicked can destroy the world also in ten utterances. And so if God says these ten words, then the righteous will prevail. Rabbi Herschel Deutsch, an Orthodox rabbi of the last generation, he said this teaches us a deeper lesson than just how many words it takes to create something. He says a lot of little pieces make a whole. What people do privately is good, but what we do together as a collective, that is our ultimate goal. There's a beautiful commentary called the Derech Chaim, which is a commentary on repentance, and it looks also about this teaching of ten utterances. And the Derech Chaim says, yes, from God's perspective, it took ten utterances to create the world. But we are not God, and so from our perspective, it looked like it was 10. In essence, when we look at the world, we have a different perspective than God has. That's part one. Part two that we heard from our B'nai Mitzvah so beautifully is the creation of Shabbat. We read in Parshat Breshit, Vayivarech Elohim et Yom HaShvi'i, that God blesses the seventh day. But what does that actually mean? And the rabbis say that on the seventh day on Shabbat, we receive a neshama yitera, an extra soul. But it wasn't only the first Shabbat that received that extra soul, but that extra soul was for every single Shabbat of all time going forward. Yes, we speak about that extra soul often in metaphorical terms. But today, this first Shabbat that we read about the creation of the world, I'm going to share with you a story that combines both how we utter things into creation and when we do that, that extra soul arrives. Now when you hear this story, it might sound almost unbelievable, and it is true, but even Freddie Freeman would think this story is a grand slam. <laughs> I know what you were doing last night. On Yom Kippur in the martyrology service, where we usually detail the martyrs of Jewish history, specifically in the Middle Ages with Rabbi Akiva, who lived during the time of the Roman decree that they could, nobody could study Torah, they couldn't celebrate bar and bat mitzvahs. And every year we tell those stories of Jewish martyrs, but this year was a little different. We created our own liturgy for the martyrology service, and we told just a sample of the Jewish martyrdom of this past year. But we always, as Jews, conclude with the story of hope. And so I invited Miss Lauren Delinka, who is the head of our lower school at Sinai Akiba Academy, to share the story of her own family this year. Miss Delinka has a four-month-old child named Aviv. And she explained that her and her husband were having some infertility challenges and when they realized that they were pregnant, they wanted to name their child after heroes of October 7th. She had gone to Israel in April with a group of Jewish educators, and she first heard the story of Aviv Baram, who was the head of security at Kibbutz Kfar Aza, and she thought, this is a beautiful name, a beautiful hero, but she wanted to find another Aviv to also name her child after. And so she read the story of Aviv Eliyahu, 
It was just an article in the Times of Israel, just one article about this 38-year-old man, and he was this chief of security at the Nova Festival. And she came back, and at the Brit Milah in Barad Hall, she told the story of naming her child Aviv. And I said, you have to utter those words again. And so she came on this Biman Yom Kippur and shared that story. But she shared that just a couple of weeks ago, her husband Mike was a lone soldier when he was in his 20s on the border of Gaza. And there he had an adopted family, a woman named Didi. And they found out by one degree of separation, Jews don't do six, we just do one degree, that she found out that she connect with Aviv Baram's family. And so she's been in touch with Aviv's wife, Kheli. And after she came down from this bima, I said, but Lauren, who is Aviv Eliyahu? And she said he was the head of security at Nova, but I don't know much about him besides this one article. Remember the 10 utterances that God brings into this world that each of us have to play a part in order to see that as one. This past week on Sukkot, I received a call from a Sinai Temple member and he said, Rabbi, do you have an extra lulav? I said, of course, we have plenty. Who needs it? He said, there's a man coming from Israel and he is the uncle, just bear with me, it's a complicated story. He is the uncle of Shlomi Ziv. Shlomi Ziv is six over from the bottom next to the American flag. He was released after 240, sorry, not released, rescued after 246 days in captivity in Project Arnon, if you remember, in June. His uncle was going to be visiting. I said, of course, we'll have a lulav. And he said he wanted to bring him downstairs to the preschool on Jonah's play yard for Minyan Minyan and show this Israeli how beautiful our future is here at Sinai and how we interact with Zionism and Israel education. And the night before... This man called me and we began speaking in my broken Hebrew. And he said, but I need to tell you the story of my son. I said, no, you're here to tell the story of your nephew who was released from hostage. He said, no, the story of my son. I said, who is your son? He said, my son is Aviv Eliyahu. <sighs> Uttered those words and the soul, the Nishamaya Tira, came alive. And so Wednesday morning, with hundreds of Douglas family, ECC children and parents, some of you were there, in front of everybody for the first time. Lauren Delinka, who named her child Aviv after Aviv Baram and Aviv Eliyahu, met before our eyes Sinai Eliyahu, the father of Aviv. After that mini minion and reunion where there was not a dry eye, we went up to my office and we began, or they began, sharing the stories to each other. Lauren explained to Aviv's parents why she chose to name her son after their son. And then the camera switched, and Aviv Eliyahu's mom told Lauren Delinka the traits and characteristics of their son that they want Aviv Delinka to carry on in his life. We began to hear the story of Aviv Eliyahu He's very famous, a very famous video the, at 6.29 a.m. He was the one that got on the microphone and told everybody what to do. And he said he first realized what was happening. People fled to the north, but they were coming back wounded. And then people fled to the south, and they were coming back wounded, and he didn't know what to do. And instead, he said these words, Lechu lekivun Hashemesh. Go towards the direction of the light. Go towards the direction of the sun. And because he said that, thousands of people fled that way, and he saved their lives that day. When his father told us this, and this is a picture of Aviv with those words that he saved people's lives with, Lechu Lekivun Hashemesh. All I could think about were those ten utterances of God, because the first thing that God utters in our Parsha Breshit, Yehi Or. Let there be light. Let there be light. It's Parshat Breshit. Each of us, individually, but most importantly as a collective, we have a chance to create a new world again. Remember, God did not do that in one word. 
but God did it in 10 words. We must keep speaking. We must keep sharing. We must keep living. For each of our utterances and words matter so that one day we will create the ultimate Shabbat, that not the one day of the week will have the Neshama Yatera, that extra soul, but that extra soul will be with us every single day of our lives. Yes, the world was created in 10 utterances, but we're known as an Am Echad and Lev Echad. We are one nation with one heart. And so this Shabbat of Breshit, where we get to choose the world that we live in, let us fill the world with light. Let us say those words of Aviv Eliyahu, Lechu Lekivun Hashemesh. In the year ahead, may we go towards the direction of the sun. Shabbat Shalom. We turn to page 204.